What's going on, everybody? Getting to the uh, top end part of this YZ250 rebuild. And an important step that many people overlook or they're unsure how to do is, and it even describes it in your service manual, how to measure the end gap of your rings as I drop one uh, like in this let's find the page in the manual ring gap Uh, and when you order a new piston, it'll give you what is recommended. And for this particular one, you know, doing the Wiseco piston, it recommends 0 0.004 per one inch of bore. As far as your end gap here, ring gap. All right, I've got a 68.50 millimeter bore it's an overboard cylinder which is 2.6 have to look at it again 2.697 inches all right so we would multiply 0 0.004 times 2.697 or whatever your total bore is that equals 0 0.010 inch of ring gap I should have and the reason you measure this is because these may be you know made in an assembly line and then the gap may be slightly different we're talking very minor amounts but they definitely can't be too close like if the gap is too close you know you've got heat to deal with and if these rings start touching too closely when the engine is at temperature you could have serious problems. So, this is why we measure this when we install new rings on, you know, any any engine really. But uh, so, if you can look at it closely, let's see if I can do a little zoom in here. Hang tight one second. All right. So, see that gap right up at the top there? The tiny gap. That is the gap they're talking about. Okay, I need to have 0 .010 inches of ring gap. All right, and let's look in top of the cylinder here, and I'll show you what it looks like. All right. And the procedure is, you know, you... Put your ring down in the top of the cylinder then you can turn your hold on turn your piston upside down and just evenly slightly push the ring down in the cylinder you want it to be nice and square basically you know you don't want the ring to be sideways or anything like that so that's why we use the, the piston itself to push it down in there and that way you can compare the piston you know and a point here to make sure you know your ring is in there nice and square all right now you get your feeler gauges these guys here and you need to measure that gap that i just showed you and if this will stay in focus as i walk around it here bear with me all right, you take your feeler gauge here and you need to measure that gap right there. It's going to be, I mean, it's going to be tight. And you have to make sure that the two ends are perfect, perfectly even. All right, if you see how the ring is, or how the uh, feeler gauge is inserted there. You basically gotta find the one that fits the best. 
in that gap. Okay, and mine happens to be 0 0.010 inches or 0.254 millimeters. And that is, it happens to be what is recommended by the manufacturer, you know, the ring manufacturer, for my diameter of cylinder bore. So, but the, the rule of thumb is per one inch of bore across, it needs to be 0 0.004 inches per each inch. Does that make sense? Okay. So you'll have to do some calculating to, uh, you know, to figure that up. But uh, that is a general rule of thumb when, uh, you know, when rebuilding your top end or installing new piston or rings or anything relating to the cylinder. Because if you have too tight a gap, that right there is, if it's too tight, once everything heats up, it's going to come even closer together and then you could, you could have some serious problems. So, your general rules. And there's plenty of other ways people do it. You know, I mean, there's, that's just the way that we do it. And um, reading right off of the little slip that comes with it as far as checking for the proper ring end gap, your service manual will tell you as well as the whatever manufacturer you buy your piston and rings from. Anywho, that's it. We are watching uh, Iron Man motocross race from a couple of months ago. You know, always like to see, we haven't watched a full event in a while. And uh, since there's hardly any racing going on right now, it's nice to check up and, uh, you know, check out some some AMA Pro Motocross out there. And we try to put some of this on our channel, but sometimes it's difficult to get it up there without copyright issues and whatnot. But anywho, that's it for now. As you see, we're making nice progress on our engine here. New uh, clutch cover, water pump cover, ignition cover, uh, did a thorough cleaning of the cylinder inside. You know, you want to make sure that you remove any tar or gook and you remove the uh, power valve cover. Make sure all that's nice and clean. You might have to disassemble the power valve. Mine was not that bad. I just did some exterior cleaning, you know, with various sprays and um, oil removers and tar removers and that sort of thing. But you want to make sure everything is really clean in there. And, um, you know, if there's no problems inside your bore, then... Uh, you know, just make sure it's spotlessly clean and then wipe it clean with maybe a, a little white rag with some WD-40 on it. Make sure that it comes off nice and clean. And um, you can get it ready for install. So, making headway here. Almost, almost there. Of course, I've been saying that forever. But um, if you guys... Uh, if you're working on your own engine and you know, you're looking for a few tips here and there, scan through our other videos. We've got all kinds of videos and we did a complete bottom end rebuild on this engine. And we've got transmission tips and the governor tips and Kickstarter rebuild, you know, the kickstart mechanism. Um, a lot of various little tips that may help you. So look through our channel and uh, they may help you out. So... Anywho, that's it for now. Biker Dave in the shop working on a Friday night. And uh, we'll have more videos up soon. So you'll have a good one. We'll see you all later.